So at this point, I'm assuming that you've correctly got the Pentaho Report Designer installed, version 3.9, that you've managed to download and install the additional packages that have been uh, created by Peter van der Meer that allow an open ERP data source to be added. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new report with the data set, which is uh, now, if I right click on the data set there, I get to choose what type of data source will be used. And I'm going to go down to the advanced option where I can find the opening up a data access source. Now at this point in time, it's worth highlighting that the host, the port, the database name, username, password, are uh, being keyed here for use to, during the designer phase. When the report is included with the Willow IT uh, Pentaho extension, it will open up the extension, it will uh, replace the host and port uh, with uh, appropriate parameters to allow it to choose the current database that it is being run on. Um, and the username and password will, will use uh, be using the current username at the time of running and therefore will apply the OpenERP security applicable to the uh, executing user. So we're going to give this query a name. We're going to create a very basic uh, contact list. So this is going to be our uh, partner query. We're going to build this from the top level down. We'll build it from the partner file down to the addresses, not the other way around. So the host here is, uh, well, I've got it hosted on a, a local VM. And so I can apply the uh, through port 8069, which is the uh, default for 6.1. Open ERP, uh, the database, we can uh, either type it in or we can select it. And I'm going to test using the username admin. The model name is going to be, as we said, I'm going to choose it from the top down. So I'm going to start with the partner. And on this tab here, in the search fields, we define what fields we want to uh, play with. Uh, we define which fields we want to, uh, well, most importantly to display, but fields for, for grouping or for selections, if we get in that uh, advanced, we can just put them in here. So what we will do is we will create a in our name and then we want to pull from the address link we want to pull in the address name now obviously this is going to be a little bit confusing a little bit of conflict so we can recall we can change our field name there so this will be our partner name, while well, this one we're going to call our contact name. Now what will we want to see for the contact? Maybe a phone number and maybe their email address, a zip code perhaps, and let's be a little bit more clever and get the country name. Now you will have noticed there that on the left hand side we have all of the columns that are available for the model showing up. Now they include functional and related fields which will be displayed uh, as if they are actual columns on the table in this 
particular layout. That is because we are using OpenERP to query the data, so we are not restricted to what's in the SQL uh, definition or what's in the SQL table. We are uh, looking at the fields as they get calculated or uh, as they get displayed or as they get related through a standard OpenERP uh, Python script. Okay, I think that will probably do us there. If I click on preview, we will then see that the data would be correctly selected. So I'll close that. Okay, before we continue, I'll click on save. Since the object here is not to show you how to create reports uh, in the designer, um, I've skipped ahead here and we have a sample uh, layout, pulling in our contact name, phone, email, etc. Uh, and we can go and click on the preview and see what would come out from the database based on the credentials provided. And what we will do next is show you how to bring it into OpenERP. So I'll save this report and we'll go from there. There are obviously many enhancements that could be made to this report, but one thing that I really would like to highlight is uh, relating to sorting and grouping. And uh, one of the clever things that has been built into the OpenERP data source is uh, the way that uh, this can be sorted. Um, if no sort sequences are provided, then the default sort sequences as defined in the model within OpenERP will be used. However, if we need to change uh, the sort sequence, which frequently we will need to do, particularly if we are going to group, um, then we need to do this through the data source. So opening the data source and uh, going to the tab here for the search fields, and all the fields that we had defined earlier are listed there. Now, what we can do here is we can decide which fields are going to be used in our sort sequence and whether the sort is going to be ascending or descending. So just to be a little bit clever, we're going to sort ascending first by our partner name. In fact, let's do descending on the partner name and then within partner, the second field, we want to sort ascending. If we preview the data there, we will actually see that that's the way the data will come in. And the partner name is descending, while under here, under agrole, we have our contact names ascending. In fact, what you may notice is that we write this query to work from the partner file, yet we have one record per partner contact, which makes it appear as if we actually had chosen the context file as our basis. The reason for this is that the partner file has a one-to-many relationship to the contact file. And the data structure is clever enough that when we are including fields from this one-to-many relationship, that it knows it needs to loop through. And so the partner will get included once per contact that is related to it. So the difference between writing this query to run from the partner file and writing it to run from the contact file will simply be to do with any contacts that may be defined that don't have a partner. 
Given that open ERP does not allow us to have contacts that don't belong to a partner, this would not be any uh, issue. However, if a data structure did allow that, then the orphaned records would be able to be included only if we queried from the lower level. But for all intents and purposes, this query would work the same, but you would have to assign it to the correct object, which will be shown in the next video when adding the report to, uh, to opening up here. So if I close that, I'm happy with that, and I have a look at the structure, it now makes entire uh, sense for us to have our grouping the way we have it and our sort sequence. If I preview that now, we have our contacts coming up in the reverse sequence that we talked about. While not needed on this report, I would like to show you how to create a filter on the data source. If I open the data source here, there is a filters tab. On the left here, we have the three models that have been selected, and any field from any of the models can be chosen to filter the data. So if we decide that we want, not just the ones that have been selected here, if we decide we want to filter the data based on address type, so we only wanted to get the default addresses, for example, I can add a new filter against that particular model. Here now I get a list of all of the fields that are, or all columns that are defined for that model, and that field that we're looking for is type. And we want to pick them up if the type is default. Now, if I click on Preview, we now only get the, uh, the rows where the column was default. However, we haven't included it in the output, and we don't need to if we don't need to display it or work with it beyond this point. But I don't need this selection for the report.